Hi, this is Pastor Mark Shepherd. Thanks for joining me today uh, for our weekly word of encouragement um, in our excerpt for today. Last time we got together, we talked about the Father's love towards you and I. And we left off on an area of uh, God cares about you individually. And with that, that means we don't have to worry and we don't have to have anxiety. Jesus said, uh, what is the, your life if, if you're worrying about other things? He said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added. And so in the midst of what we've been facing as a country, uh, internationally, as the whole world, I want to let you know that the Father is still God, Jesus is still Lord, and the precious Holy Spirit, who is the third portion of God, third part of God, the third part of the Trinity, He's on the earth, and He also lives inside every born-again believer. And the Bible says that greater is He that is in us, talking about the God, the person of God, the Holy Spirit that lives in us, than any force, any uh, virus, any uh, disease, any calamity that would befall us. And I want to take off when we talked about anxiety and worry. Uh, I read this scripture last week, and I'm going to read it again. I think it bears repetition. Uh, Jesus says, I tell you in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, uh, this is why I tell you not to worry about your everyday life. So Jesus is telling you and I, if he, even if he appeared to you right now and you can see him with your natural visual eyes and he would say to you and he'd call you by name and say, don't worry, guess what? We have a sure foundation and a sure word of prophecy by his written word, which is like the Lord speaking to us today. And he's telling us, no matter what we're facing, you don't have to worry. And the Bible says, uh, so don't worry about tomorrow, Jesus said in verse 34. Matthew chapter 6, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Uh, there's some quotes I want to uh, read to you. This was by Oswald Chambers. It's talking about worry. He said this, all our fret and worry is caused by calculating without God. Isn't that a great statement? I'm going to read that again. He said, all our fret and worry is caused by calculating without God. Because I believe the Bible says more than 365 times, uh, fear not. And when Jesus came on the scene, he always said, fear not. Fear not, children. Fear not, little flock. When, when, when God spoke, he always came with a word of, uh, of exhortation and a word of encouragement and a word of comfort, not a word of fear. And then Peter Al Alwinson said this, worry is simply imaginations gone away. <laughs> what does that mean? It means uh, worry is basically imagination just going wayward, all right? What we're thinking on. And did you know you could choose what you think on? And we have to constantly fight thoughts, but you fight thoughts not with thoughts. You fight thoughts with words. And so you have to say out loud, uh, another quote says this, worry does not empty tomorrow of its sorrow. It empties today of its strength. That kind of goes on with Jesus says, so don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will take care of itself. And then I have a last quote here by uh, Mickey Rivers. He said, ain't no sense worrying about things you, got con you don't have control over because if you've got control over them, ain't no sense worrying. And there ain't no sense worrying about things you got no control over either, because if you got no control, if you got no control over them, it ain't no sense worrying. And so uh, he did a lot of ain'ts in that, but we don't have to worry. Why? Because our father, we're in his care. And Jesus said, uh, you know, if the father clothed the grass, let me read this again, in uh, verse 28, Matthew chapter 6, and he says, and why worry about your clothing? Look at all the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work. They don't make their clothing. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully uh, for the wild flowers that are here today and thrown into the father and in, into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? He ended up. So worry really is 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 saying, you know what? 
I'm not calculating God in this. I'm not putting faith in this. I'm more concerned about and worried about this situation. And hopefully the Lord is big enough to deliver me through. No, have faith in the Father's love for you we spoke about last weekend. One scripture I want to give to you, 1 Peter chapter 5. This is a well-known scripture. It says, cast or give all your worries and cares to God for he cares about you. I'm going to give and cast all my worries. It's just like taking a ball and you throw it. You take it. I'm casting it to the Father. And guess what? I'm, he's not going to throw it back at me and I'm not going to take it back. Once I cast that care, I'm done with it. And it says this in the Amplified Version, uh, 1 Peter 5, 7. Casting all your cares, all your anxiety, all your worries, and all your concerns once and for all on him, for he cares about you with deepest affection and watches over you very carefully. Now that's the father. Jesus said that the angel, we have guardian angels and, and the angels, when we were born, the angels are before the father, our guardian angels, he said. And then lastly, I want to re read you with this, that you're not alone. As we're going through this as a, as a country and as families, guess what? You and I are not alone. And this is a word throughout for our, for our whole lives. We're not alone. Uh, Jesus said this in John chapter 14, and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter, talking about the Holy Spirit, that he may live with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither knows him, but he went on to say, but you know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. And he was talking to the disciples prior to him going to the cross. And on the day of Pentecost, uh, we had the, what we call the gift of salvation brought to us once Jesus was rose again. And then on the day of Pentecost, that's when the Holy Spirit came to the earth and came to the believers and he's been here ever since. And so we're not alone, you're not alone. Hebrews says this, uh, let your, your, your lifestyle or your, your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things that you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you so that we may boldly say, that's you and I, we can boldly say this and declare, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what can man or anything anybody else do unto me. And so the Lord is our helper. So if you haven't said that of late, it's a good time to say it now. Say this with me. Father, you're my helper. Father, you're my comforter. Father, you guide me and lead me into all the truth. And you watch over me carefully. And I mean your care. And so that's an encouraging word for us. It's an encouraging word for me. It's an encouraging word, I hope, to you, is that the Father loves you to the point where, guess what? We don't have to have anxiety. Even though anxiety would try to come, we can speak to that and say, no, my Father is watching over me, and I have more faith in Him than any circumstance I'm facing, any setback I'm looking at, because He is my Father, and He loves me effectually. Well, thanks for being with me today. That's our word for the week. Let's take that word, feed on it this week, and I'll tell you what, it will galvanize and stir up faith in us and confess that over yourselves and not just yourselves. Confess that over your family. Confess that over your children, over your children's children, your spouse, over your, the place where you work, over you know, uh, people that, that you are in close relations with because the Father cares for all of us. God bless you and thanks for joining us. In Jesus' name, we'll see you next week.